Yes. Hi. Um, I hope you can hear me and see me. Um, yes. I am going to start presenting soon. I have some slides and some pictures. But first, I just want to say hi. Um, I'm in Bucharest. I've been working from home for um, a lot of time. Um, I think for about 10 days now, uh, the entire newsroom has been kind of officially shut um, and we're working from home. Uh, but before I kind of dive into what all of the different repercussions of that have been for us and what, how our plans have changed, I just want to share a bit about uh, what we've been doing. Hang on, let me just share a screen. Just for people who don't know about Door, um, I hope you can see this. Let me know if you can't in the, in the comments or if there's any errors at any point in the comments. Um, so... I see you. It's cool. Awesome. Oh, hang on. Wrong button. So the present button is what I was looking for. Uh, basically, um, I'm digital editor of DOR. Uh, DOR is an independent media organization based in Romania. And all of our journalism and everything that we do is with the idea that um, well-documented stories can start conversations um, and can bring people together and create a sense of shared belonging and shared power. Um, DOR has been going on for about 10 years. Um, it started as an experiment, as one issue of a magazine. Um, but now we just published, um, at the beginning of March, our 39th issue. Uh, we do primarily narrative journalism that helps contextualize issues in modern day Romania and that showcases the different realities people experience. Um, we publish a magazine that is quarterly, so it appears quarterly in print. Uh, we publish increasingly more online, and that's been happening for about a year and a half, and now we're experimenting more with our online formats. Um, and we also organize um, several events, what well, we used to. Right now, we're um, transforming them. We're seeing how, how things are changing. So the print magazine, um, we print about 5,000 copies. Of those, about 2,000 go to our subscribers, and the rest go in shops. Um, and since December, we've added a digital membership option. Um, so that also includes a separate community area on our website. And I'll kind of come back to that a bit later on um, in the presentation. I think one thing that's good to say um, at the beginning is that community has always been very important for DOOR. Um, I think that the first newsroom was furnished partly with gifts from, from some of our supporters. We still have, I think, at least one chair that we've moved from the different newsrooms we've been in since. Um, so it's been kind of a journey of understanding a bit more about our community and then trying to come up with journalism and with events and with products that kind of help everybody stay together and help us be close to them as well. Um, I want to talk a little bit about events because this was this is a big part of what we we've been doing. Um, we've been organizing different kinds of events from um, large conferences to live um, storytelling shows and to smaller meetups for the majority of the time that door has existed. Uh, for the past few months, we've actually had pretty much weekly meetups with our community, whether these are like short um, meet the reporter meetings in our newsroom or larger events. Um, and we actually had a lot of um, workshops and meetups um, organized for March and April. And we have a few kind of tentatively planned um, for the next few months. So this is a photo from one of our community meetups. This is a photo from one of our live storytelling shows. We actually had one scheduled for July, and we don't really know what's going to happen with it yet. Um, and this is from one of the smaller kind of on-the-road um, events that we've done to um, uh, report on cities outside of Bucharest. Uh, this is from a pop-up newsroom experiment we organized in the summer. So um, kind of coming back to the events that we had planned, we had a series of workshops and meetings for March, which we had postponed indefinitely. Um, and we also had a series for April that we're at the moment trying to figure out whether 
um, we can turn those into online events. Um, for some of them, it's easier. We've actually did um, we've actually done a couple of webinars that worked quite well. But some of the workshops that we did um, require people to be writing something uh, on the spot or to be drawing or doing a bit more artsy things, which are quite difficult to do online. So we're in the process of figuring out which of these events can, can be transported to an online environment and which of those have to be postponed. Um, but for a very long time, a lot of our interaction with our community was offline and we've invested a lot of time into um, learning how to be better facilitators um, how to moderate and how to mediate conversations and create these offline experiences that at the moment we can't really do um, so it's been um, it's been an interesting shift in what in our idea of what we offer our community during this time um, and it kind of feels like for a lot of us in the newsroom and for for most of, for some of our community, at least from what we've heard, that there's the sense that life as we knew it um, is changing at this point. Um, so for the past couple of months, for, for the past couple of weeks, actually, we've dedicated a lot of our editorial efforts to covering what's happening in a few different ways. The newest thing for us is that we're doing a daily newsletter. Um, it's been running for about 10 days. Um, for us, it's very, new to be doing anything that we have to publish daily because for a very long time we've been used to a um well a slower kind of rhythm we do heavily documented stories that can take anywhere up to a year to be published so um it's been very very interesting and in a way energizing to be doing this newsletter um the feedback has been really good um the open rate is really high it's around 50 percent until now um, and I'll come back to it a bit later. Um, we've also been publishing quite a bit. We're doing um, shorter stories, kind of trying to identify the different ways our lives are changing. So these could be anywhere from how we work from home at this point, um, how we, what's changing for artists whose shows are canceled, um, what's changing for people who work in restaurants or who own restaurants or who work in NGOs who can no longer organize events. So we're very much trying to identify all of the different things in our lives that are now shrouded in uncertainty and to start a conversation around that. Um, we're not doing news at this point. The newsletter has a, a curation aspect to it where we talk about, um, I guess, the latest news happening in Romania from the number of cases to the um the measures that the government is taking regarding isolation or um any news from the health system but we aren't um following doing like alerts on the cases of coronavirus that have been confirmed um we're also doing this collective journal uh this has been a very interesting process for us because the whole team has been working from home for about 10 days and it's a one of the ways that we've tried to keep in touch with um, each other but also with our community um, this is a it's pretty much a google doc and we just kind of talk about um, our days and we also invite um, community contributions we have um, a form that people can fill in if they want to share us share their stories with us and we've had about 70 responses so far um, but they're very detailed responses they're people from from a few different countries actually who read us and who are sharing what's happening in their countries and how they're affected uh, by by all of the measures and by what's happening around them um, and we also opened the Slack community for our uh, members. Um, and so far about a hundred of them have joined. This has been open since Friday. So it's been, it's been a very interesting process. <laughs> um, and the other thing, the other discussion is the webinars that we're still trying to kind of um, see whether this is an area that we can um, talk about a bit more in the future and do more of. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and just um, talk through why we're doing all of the things that we're doing. Um, 
I feel like one of the things that we are trying to do and which is very kind of in tune with our mission um, and what our mission has been for a while is doing um, this journalism that allows people to share their experiences. But more than that, it feels like the journalist is listening to them and that everyone's experiences are valid because we've had these conversations around in our newsroom as well about what our mission is as journalists right now because we're not doing breaking news. We are not reporting on that side actively. We have more of a curator role. So what should our reporting actually do? And what we're trying to do with um, all of our journalists um, and all of our actions, including the journal, including the, um, the Slack group, is that it's a place where you can come and you can talk about what you're feeling. And it could be even things like, I'm struggling to work from home. It could be things like, I worry about my mother who works in a supermarket. And while all of us are staying at home, my mother can't do that. It could be things like how you take, how you make decisions at this time um, and how you weigh, I guess, all of the options about whether you should visit your um, older parents. So uh, we're kind of gearing more towards this aspect of exploring what's happening, how our lives are changing and trying to bring the community together so they feel less alone at this point. Um, another quick thing that I want to share before I start looking at the questions um, is that we're actively thinking about how re our readers are feeling about um, what they are seeing and what they're reading in the news. So we want to make sure, including um, in our newsletter, that there is a good balance of news, uh, that there's a good balance of things that um, are maybe more anchored in everyone's reality and that we also look at uh, potential solutions or positive news. We have a section in the newsletter um, every day that's called the good news of the day. And that's where we write things, including um, any progress in different countries that we found. It could be resources that um, you can now read anything for free on script or things like that, that can kind of um, make people feel at the end of interacting with what we're sending them that um, they're not powerless that they have some agency and that there are things that they can do for themselves and for their own community to um, uh, to help at this time which um, we know is very um, stressful and anxiety inducing for a lot of people so i'm gonna have a look at the questions i can help you with that i thank uh... you <laughs> Yeah, you found the chat. So first, yeah. the, I'm going to read out the question from uh, from Inga Springer. And first of all, Inga, hey, hello. It's uh, been a long time, but I'm happy that we're able to, to have you here with us. So her question is, uh, are you able to sustain yourself or are you looking also for grants? So um, at this point, we, we have the membership and subscriptions model, which is um, has been a huge help for us. The other revenue streams that we have is events. Uh, this one is going to be a big question mark over the next year, um, and we're going to see um, how that happens and how that changes and what we can do there. Um, we're also looking at grant opportunities um, at this time. Um, it's always been for us a mix of revenue streams, kind of going from reader revenue to events to grants, very little advertising. Um, that's been kind of slowly scaling down because we feel like um, the best sort of option for us is to rely more on our readers and providing value for them than relying on advertisers. So um, at the moment, um, it looks like we're okay, but we're having a team meeting on Wednesday, so ask, ask me again on Wednesday. And also something which, like the second question from Inga, something I also wanted to ask, she asked, how is the team? And I wanted to ask you about that that switch which you have made into daily uh, stories, which mm -hmm. I think for like a magazine, as you have always been, is quite a shift. So was it just natural or what, like, you were just no thinking, you just did it? How did it go? Um, so we are about 25 people in total, and this is split amongst reporters, um, editors, um, financial and 
um, more administrative um, roles, um, community roles. So it's, it's quite a big team with a lot of different um, roles that had been sort of already in a transition process um, this year. Kind of we've reorganized some of our teams and we were just about learning how to work with each other um, in those teams. And now we're all working from home um, in a very new rhythm. So it's been a big learning curve. We're taking it sort of week by week, um, coming up with ways to organize and ways to make sure that people get the breaks that they need. Um, we've come up with a rota, I think, for the first time in, in a while. Um, it's very much work in progress. Um, but yeah, it's just a way to, to figure out that there's not roles that those people can take no breaks especially because for the newsletter there's a few different roles and there's a few people who have those skills to kind of fulfill them and make sure that those skills get passed down and there is a rota on these tasks and that we know um, all of the work that people have on their plate and we know not to add on to it as much as possible but um, it is a work in progress i think for the first um, week because it was so new we were very adrenaline fueled we were very excited to be doing the reporting. Um, we were getting used to our working from home environment. So um, now we're kind of realizing that this is not a three week project. Um, it's going to go on for an unidentified period of time at this point. And we have to come up with a workflow that we can sustain for, for that long. And okay. Uh, so I have uh, two more questions for you, and they're kind of related, so I'm just going to yeah. read them together. One is from Ludo Yona. Are you using Facebook groups or other social media as a tools? And the second one is, could you share your advice on how you are keeping the community engaged on Slack? Um, yeah, so we are using social media at this time. We're promoting the newsletter through social media, and we're doing um, kind of repackaging some of the content, uh, primarily for Instagram. Uh, we've seen that Instagram has been a very good channel for us, uh, maybe a bit more than Facebook at this point, although Facebook, um, our reach on Facebook has increased a lot since we started publishing more often and since we're covering this subject. Um, we haven't started any new Facebook groups around it. We had one Facebook group before, which was around one of the podcasts that we publish. So we've used that Facebook group occasionally to um, just to kind of get the pulse of what their experience is like. For example, I wrote a story on working from home and I asked people in the Facebook group what their experience has been on that. But um, we haven't started anything specific on this yet. Um, regarding Slack, this is very new for us. Um, it's been going on for about four or five days. Uh, so far, it's going well. We started with a few channels, uh, one channel for introductions, one channel for personal stories, and one channel for more like, I guess, good news or interesting things that people are finding, like resources that they can share. Um, and so far, it seems to be working. Um, we're planning for the Slack channel to be one of the things that goes in sort of a rota for the team. So um, as many people as possible from our team interact with our community there and just come up with, um, I guess, prompts or um, ways to get people sharing if the natural flow of the, of the conversation slows down. But at the moment, it's quite uh, new. So we'll see where we're at with that in a while. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your time and for especially, you know, for joining and preparing the presentation in such a heated time. Uh, so we wish you all the best. And if there is anything you would need, just, you know, reach out to everybody here or uh, me, Alan, or whoever there is. Please stay with us and we will now begin the transition to Tommaso. Uh, yeah, thank you. I just want to say thank you for listening. And I'm here if you have any more questions for me, you can send them to me uh, wherever in the chat or Twitter. And it's been great being here. And I'll stick around to listen to you guys.